Today, the grades are in for remote learning. Our oldest went from the honor roll to F's and D's. Students are being left behind. Kids are just falling through the cracks. Will schools reopen their classrooms in the age of COVID? And he's like, I, I hate this. I just want to go back to being in person. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. Vice President Pence has made it crystal clear he will not invoke the 25th Amendment to remove President Trump from office. Now the push is on from Democrats to impeach the president a second time, and more and more Republicans are supporting the effort. Critics warn that impeaching the president will fire up even more division in the country. The big question, is it constitutional? CBN's Caitlin Burke explains. The House is ready to move forward with impeachment today after passing a resolution last night calling on Vice President Pence to remove the president from office by invoking the 25th Amendment, a choice Pence has made clear he will not make. In a letter sent to Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Pence said, quote, Last week, I did not yield to the pressure to exert power beyond my constitutional authority to determine the outcome of the election. And I will not now yield to efforts in the House of Representatives to play political games at a time so serious in the life of our nation. House Democrats now plan to move to impeach Trump. If successful, it would make him the only president in U.S. history to be impeached twice. At least five House Republicans plan to vote to impeach the president, possibly up to a dozen, including Liz Cheney, the third highest ranking GOP lawmaker in the House. In a statement, she said, quote, The President of the United States summoned this mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack, adding, There has never been a greater betrayal by a President of the United States of his office and his oath to the Constitution. Impeachment only incites more division. It does not provide unity. Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs, who opposes any action against the president, called on Cheney to resign her leadership position. On Fox's Hannity program, constitutional attorney Alan Dershowitz called the impeachment vote theater because the president will likely be out of office before the Senate can hold a trial. The Constitution only empowers Congress to impeach and remove a president from office. Once he's out of office, Congress loses jurisdiction. They can't have a trial. President Trump, meanwhile, is not taking any responsibility for the attack on the Capitol. So if you read my speech, and many people have done it, and I've seen it both uh, in the papers and in the media, on television, uh, it's been analyzed, and people thought that what I said was totally appropriate. According to the Washington Post, the FBI issued a warning a day before rioters stormed the Capitol that violent extremists were headed to Washington, prepared to commit acts of violence and, quote, war. Acting Attorney General Jeff Rosen says no resources will be spared in protecting the public in the days to come. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Well, CBN Capitol Hill correspondent Abigail Robertson joins us now for more and you just spoke with Senator Chris Coons. What's the latest from the Democrats? Well, I talked to Senator Coons about why are Democrats pursuing impeachment when Trump will likely already be out of office by the time, if, if, if the Senate is to convict him, by the time that would happen. And he told me that there are other reasons that they're pursuing impeachment besides just removing him from office. And those include part of these articles of impeachment would bar President Trump from ever running for office again. They would also strip him of financial benefits awarded to former presidents, like pensions, things like that. So that is why Democrats want to move forward with this, because they want to make sure that this just takes away any chance of President Trump ever holding office again. Well, so they're invoking the 14th Amendment, which is a, a, a there's literally no procedure for that. There's no history at all. Um, and, and all of that was put into place after the Civil War. Once you take an oath to support the Constitution, if you're ever involved in an insurrection against the United States, then you lose your political rights and you can't be an office holder anymore. 
Uh, this is the first I've heard they're actually going for the pension rights. Uh, what about Secret Service protection? Is that on the table? I'm not quite sure if I, I would hope for President Trump that they would not remove him, remove Secret Service, because we are in crazy times right now, and I'm sure there would be many security threats on his life. I'm not quite sure about Secret Service, but we are in truly unprecedented times. And, you know, Republicans, on the other hand, while there will be some Republicans, like Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who will support voting support these articles of impeachment, the majority of Republicans are still against them, and they're urging their Democrat colleagues to move forward uniting the country. And they worry that pursuing impeachment is only going to fuel the fire in a time where in this week it is crucial we see a peaceful transition of power that many aren't so sure we're going to have. Well, you're standing right in the middle of the Capitol in the rotunda. What's the atmosphere like? Here, here we are a week after this, uh, something I never saw, thought I'd see in my lifetime. Uh, what's the atmosphere there? Well, Gordon, it's honestly very somber. Where I am, there's lots of media, so today is a big day. It's buzzing here. But yesterday, when I was walking through the Capitol, it, it just, you see them repairing the house, the door to the House chamber. They're, you know, they've cleaned up a lot, but also just, you, when you look at the U.S. Capitol Police Force, they've lost two of their own in the past week, and they're hurting. They're sad. You see that in their faces. Um, I, one thing that gave me hope, though, is as I walked in the tunnel between the Cannon House office building and the Capitol, there are all these notes written by staffers, written by lawmakers, I even got to write one, of messages of encouragement for the U.S. Capitol Police, thanking them for saving lives last week. But it, it's definitely somber. Tensions are very high. Um, and they still have the inauguration to prepare for next week. And here on the Capitol, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of members of the National Guard now guarding the buildings, huge fences around the Capitol buildings, around the Supreme Court. It's very hard to get in right now. But I think people are very afraid of what could happen in the next week, especially as this vote on impeachment goes forward this afternoon. Um, tell us what the, the staffers are feeling and thinking right now. I, I shudder to think what would have happened if uh, any member of Congress or the Senate had, had been uh, in the hands of that mob, what, what would have happened to them? But I know some of the staffers hid themselves in offices and tried to barricade the doors, and there were protesters banging on those doors. Uh, what are they expressing right now? Well, I would say one detail we should not overlook is Praise the Lord, because of the pandemic, there are very minimal staffers that are on the Hill right now to begin with. I, I can't even fathom what would have happened if the Hill was at full staff last week, where there would have been thousands more people here when the protesters came through. But I think everyone is shaken, and um, they just... It, it, as someone who has worked at the Capitol for four years, I have always felt so safe walking onto this building, and I don't have that right now. Um, after seeing last week, something I never thought I would see in my lifetime, it, it's, it's just crazy. And um, I know right now there's the National Guard there, but what's going to happen in a few weeks when tensions go down a little bit and some of that added security is taken away. I, I think the, the Capitol Police is going to reassess all the all the security here on the building. But what I also worry about is these lawmakers that are being threatened in their hometowns and their family where they don't have the same security that they do when they're here in D.C. working. Um, that That's something that Senator Coons told me, that he's received multiple threats and his family has been threatened. And I think we might even see some security for lawmakers when they're back in their home districts. Uh, you knew one of the Capitol policemen who died. Um, mm, tell us, yes. tell us about that, and tell us what you, what you're going through right now. Oh, I mean, it's just awful. Officer Howie, he worked at the door that I walked in almost every single time I I came and went from the Capitol in the past four years. He 
Um, he unfortunately committed suicide after the attack. He was working on Wednesday, and then a couple days later, he decided to take his own life. And it's terrible. Um, I went to that door yesterday to talk to some of the officers who work with him, and there's flowers and a memorial set up for him. But he, I cannot express enough how every time I walked through, he was smiling. He, I would always have a little conversation with him. He was so joyful. And to think that somebody like that um, would make the decision that he did, it, it's awful. It, it's honestly unfathomable. When I saw the report and when I saw this picture, I just, I can't believe it. No, I can't either. And I can't believe what happened last Wednesday. It, it, it's something like you. I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. Uh, Abby, as your uncle, please stay safe and, and please stay thank protected. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm praying for you and I, I thank you for your service and for being there today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, in other news, big tech has made another move against President Trump. This time it's from YouTube. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon, and if I may, I would like to say welcome back to Abby as well. YouTube will not let President Trump's channel upload new videos for at least seven days. The decision made over concerns about the ongoing potential for violence following last week's riot on Capitol Hill. The firm also suspended comments on the channel indefinitely. The Google-owned video service is the latest big tech firm to take action against the president after Twitter permanently suspended his account last week. That move has been criticized by international leaders in Germany and France and many in the United States who are worried about big tech censoring conservative voices. Well, despite the spread of the coronavirus, governors in local and local officials in hard-hit parts of the country are resisting new lockdown measures. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is pushing states to quickly start giving vaccinations to people 65 and older and younger people with certain health care issues. It's part of a move to slow the spread as the death toll keeps climbing. The country now is averaging more than 3,000 deaths a day, with the post-holiday surge not yet at its peak. Some warn it could top 3,500 a day, even averaging up to 4,000. Well, the Supreme Court says a woman must go to a doctor's office, hospital, or clinic in person to get an abortion pill during the COVID-19 pandemic. The court granted a Trump administration appeal to enforce that rule, which was suspended by a judge because of the pandemic. The Biden administration could reverse that decision. Well, turning overseas, the United States is imposing new sanctions on high-ranking Iranian officials. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo Pompeo announcing the sanctions after accusing Iran of having secret ties with al-Qaeda. Pompeo cited intelligence declassified since the assassination of al-Qaeda's number two in Iran in August last year. He said since 2015, Iran has provided the terrorist network a safe haven for its leaders, including logistical support to travel, the ability to communicate with other AQ leaders around the world, and even helping to raise funds. They are partners in terrorism, partners in hate. This axis poses a grave threat to the security of nations and to the American homeland itself. I would say Iran is indeed the new Afghanistan as the key geographic hub for Al Qaeda. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Israeli warplanes attacked Iranian backed militants in Syria, the strikes killing dozens of fighters along the border with Syria and Iraq. Staying in the region, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made a bold move that could alienate President elect Joe Biden. As Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports, the potential consequences highlight the coming changes in U.S. Israeli relations. The move in question, Prime Minister Netanyahu's authorization to build hundreds of housing units in Judea and Samaria. It's important to understand that now we are entering a more difficult time with a President Biden uh, who will soon be coming into office. So Netanyahu is trying to take advantage of the moment before Biden takes office to create a few facts on the ground. Netanyahu has his own political concerns as well, with Israel facing another election in March. One way of getting support from the right-wing voters is by announcing there's going to be new building in Judea and Samaria. Reclaimed during the 1967 Six-Day War, Israel considers Judea and Samaria its biblical heartland, promised to the Jewish people by God. Palestinians and much of the world call it the West Bank, view it as occupied territory and want to see it become part of a Palestinian state. 
David Rubin, former Shiloh mayor and author of Trump and the Jews, said Trump has been very good for Israel. President Trump has been the best president in history, in the history of United States-Israel relations. Among his accomplishments are recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. That's a fait accompli. Biden's not going to go back on that. Then the recognition that the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria are not illegal, which is a big change from what Obama, Bush, Clinton, what they all were saying before that. Palestinians were angered by many things Trump did, including his Jerusalem moves, defunding of the UN body responsible for Palestinian refugees, and the Abraham Accords between Israel and four Arab states. While Biden is considered to be a friend of Israel, he is also expected to be more sympathetic toward the Palestinians. Meanwhile, the foreign ministers of Germany, France and Jordan met in Egypt. They released a statement urging the resumption of credible negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians and reaffirmed their support for a two-state solution. So for Israel, the heat is on. Some fear the favor Israel had with Washington during the last four years is likely to be replaced by pressure the Jewish state felt before Trump took office. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris. Gordon, back to you. Well, let's, let's get some fait accompli facts on, on the table, just as um, Ruben expressed. The move of the embassy was based on an act of Congress. So this isn't an executive decision. Trump finally uh, pulled the trigger on what Congress put in place way back in 1996. And so uh, it, because it's an act of Congress to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, uh, Biden's going to have a tough time saying from an executive position it would need an act of Congress to change it. Same time, there's an act of Congress. Uh, there's two, the Taylor Force Act, and then there's a Terrorism Act from uh, 2018 that allows Americans to sue the recipients of any foreign aid from the U.S. if that foreign aid is tracked to acts of terrorism. So you have within the Palestinian Authority a Shaheed payment program where they pay terrorists to kill Jews and kill Israelis. And the more havoc you can wreak, the, the more you get paid. Uh, but that would expose the Palestinian Authority to suit in U.S. court by U.S. citizens uh, to say, uh, we want our tax money back. Uh, and so that would uh, literally I mean, put them in, in uh, legal wrangling for years. So that will probably stop any kind of funding to either UNRWA or the Palestinian Authority. Uh, so those are two established facts. What's not established is sovereignty over the West Bank. And a lot of people disagreed with the Abraham Accords just for that reason, that e Israel was expecting to extend sovereignty throughout the West Bank. They didn't do it in, in exchange for peace. Uh, from the Abraham Accords. There's an open question, uh, will that peace process with other Arab states continue or will it be short-circuited? Uh, and will we get back onto some kind of illusion that the Palestinians really want a state? Uh, I, I've said it many times, I don't believe they want a state. I believe earnestly what they teach their children, which is let us drive Israel into the sea. They've never had uh, an intent to form a separate Palestinian state. They believe in a one-state solution, and that one state is Palestine, uh, with no Israelis and no Jews, and let us drive them to the sea and let us have an ethnic cleansing. That's exactly what they did to the Jewish quarter in Jerusalem during the period from 1948 all the way to 1967. Uh, they ethnically cleansed the areas that they had and no Jews were allowed in. Uh, that is their goal. They've been saying it for decades. It's about time we believe it. Wendy? All right. Well, up next, the real cost of remote learning. Students are failing classes like never before. So will the schools learn their lesson? Then later. Millennials with money problems added up. This couple was a quarter million bucks in the red. Here are the financial secrets that help them pay it all off. Coming up.
Hi, this is Pat Robertson. We don't know what the future holds for different tech companies, but we always want to be able to share the good news through the media. So I want to invite you to watch our program on CBNFamily.com or download the CBN Family app. This way you can have direct access to the 700 Club and other specials from CBN, and you won't miss a thing. Now just click below to get more details and watch with us. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Tomorrow, after the American Waterloo, who's profiting off our fall? China has perfect stability. It's the model for the world. China is emerging as the global leader. That's why she feel like he really need to hurry up. At least that's what they want you to think. Everything that comes out of China, it's either greatly exaggerated or it's an out-and-out -out lie. Can anything stop this new empire? They've created a demographic trap and they're falling into it. On the 700 Club. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. Give up and shut down. That's what students who struggle with virtual learning often do. Nationwide, students are falling behind in school, especially those with learning disabilities and those who are poor. So what can schools do to help? Well, Caitlin Burke has the story. When it comes to remote learning, teachers say students tend to either excel or fail with very little middle ground. You have your very independent, kind of self-motivated kids that um, are going to keep chugging along and keep pushing through. Uh, but other students that maybe struggle a little bit more, that like um, somebody to give them encouragement or to kind of push them on and be like, yeah, that's right, keep going. Uh, those kids are really, really struggling with not having the face-to-face -face instruction daily. 25-year classroom veteran Nancy Sanders says she's never seen this level of failure. For students that struggle, it makes that struggle even bigger. And so a lot of times those kids just kind of tend to give up and shut down. Um, I feel like there's a lot of kids that are just falling through the cracks, and that really concerns me. The Martin family is a prime example. Their son, Dorian, struggled with remote learning from the start. It really hurts as a parent when you have to ground your child because you know if they were going to school, they'd be in class. They'd be participating. They wouldn't have the late assignments. They wouldn't have the tardiness. And... Our oldest went from an A, B, honorable to F, C, D. Dorian has ADHD, and even with medication, the virtual learning model feels impossible for him. He is just broke down in tears, and he's like, I, I hate this. I hate school. I hate virtual learning. I just want to go back to being in person. Clarissa Price majors in chemical engineering at Rose Holman Institute of Technology. She's used to excelling in school. As a deaf student, however, she found herself failing one of her key classes after switching to virtual learning. One of my professors would always be behind on getting the videos uploaded so that they would get processed in time for me to have captions on them. So like, I was sitting there like having to wait two days for a lecture because um, the captions weren't available. Unable to keep up, Price failed the course, which was required for advancement in her major. Fortunately, the school decided to offer it again in the fall, this time in person. I got a B the next time around. It was my highest grade. <laughs> According to a Rand Corporation report, students most likely to fall behind with virtual learning are those with disabilities of color and those who fall below the poverty line. That's pushing schools to address these issues before they face long-term consequences. In South Florida, the Palm Beach County School District sent out letters to nearly 175,000 students in K-12 through not making adequate progress learning from home. The state is requiring schools to give parents the option to send their struggling child back to the classroom come spring. 
When those students return, who choose, those parents who choose to have their students come back to face-to-face -face instruction, the school must provide additional interventions to remediate the loss of learning that has occurred. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom encouraged schools to begin reopening, starting with elementary schools. Here's the plan, phased in, in-person learning strategy that would focus disproportionately on those youngest cohorts and those that are most in need. So far, data suggests that children are not major transmitters of the coronavirus, especially in school settings. Still, states will expand safety measures and implement COVID testing to make people more comfortable returning to the classroom. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Well, we can't lose a generation. We can't lose um, young people who have either the inability to get a high-speed internet because of their economic circumstances or because of learning disabilities and they need special attention. We can't lose them. We can't leave them behind. The Bible says, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do unto me. So as a culture, as a community, as a people of God, let us do whatever we can to help those who are in need and help them specifically get the education they need to survive in an information age where education is a make or break. Can you, can you make it in an educational system? Can you make it in an inf information society? If you don't have the basic tools to do that, uh, you're not going to make it. So what can we do? Uh, what can we do to encourage uh, big tech to extend free services? What can we do as a, as a government to provide to make sure that no child is ever left behind? Wendy? Up next, a 10-year plan takes just 18 months. This couple wiped out a quarter million dollars worth of debt way ahead of schedule. So what's their top financial tip? They're going to tell you themselves. That's coming up. Plus, a pair of first responders who needed someone to help them. Who came to their rescue? Find out later on today's show. Hi, we hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more of the content you like. He founded a global ministry, interviewed world leaders, was a leading presidential candidate, and he has walked with the living God. In Pat Robertson's latest book, discover the principles that guided this extraordinary life and how they can shape your future. When you become a CBN partner, we'll send you your copy of the highly acclaimed book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Call now. The Motleys were living paycheck to paycheck. They thought payday loans would keep them afloat. Instead, their $30,000 debt ballooned to nearly a quarter million. So how was this couple able to pay it all off in just 18 months? Well, you're about to find out. When Prentice and Dion Motley married in 2004, they both had good jobs. They also had $30,000 in student loans and credit card debt. But that didn't stop them from spending more on wants than needs. A lot of the discretionary income that we would have, we, we would spend it on uh, you know, material things, and we weren't looking at the, the big picture. Before long, the Motleys were living paycheck to paycheck. It was definitely frustrating. You find yourself in a bind, and you're looking for a solution to get out of it as quickly as possible. Their solution was to use payday loans to get by. But as the high interest piled up, their financial situation started to snowball. By 2006, between a mortgage, two car payments, student loans, and credit cards, their debt had grown to a quarter of a million dollars. I'd say off and on for on a period of a year, we were using payday loans and, and the interest rates are just astronomical. We were in over our heads. We realized that, okay, this isn't working <laughs> for us. This cannot be what God intended for us to do. So how, how do we fix this? Overwhelmed by their debt, they finally went to God. We were in prayer, we fasted um, for God to give us direction as far as becoming debt-free. 
It was then they realized they had been neglecting to tithe, and that became the first order of business. So when we were able to take it back to the basics of, okay, let's give God our first fruits, then where do we go from there? With tithing now a priority, the Motleys wrote out a 10-year plan to get out of debt. They got control of their spending, and Prentice picked up as much overtime as he could. That's when they noticed some blessings. Dion got a pay raise, and Prentice received two bonuses. All told, they made nearly $30,000. It was clear that God's favor was upon our lives. It was evident that we were moving in the right direction and that God, uh, you know, God blessed us. And they say those blessings continued to pour in. And instead of taking 10 years, the Motleys were debt-free in only 18 months. During that time, the couple decided to take what God had taught them to create Motley Financial Solutions, teaching millennials the biblical principles of stewardship and tithing. My heart's desire really became to show people how to avoid the mistakes that we made, but then also give them life practical ways of managing their finances, being responsible, and becoming better stewards. Today, the Motleys are still debt free, and they give God all the glory. I know that we're favored. I know it. Um, and I don't doubt for one second. And so I am just ecstatic of, of, of all the blessings that God has done. It's all about obedience and you doing what God asked of you to do, which is to give 10%. And so what that really means is out of your obedience, give me 10% and I'm going to show you how I'm going to match and add to it. But not only that, I'm going to give you overflow. How can you say no? How can you say no? Wouldn't you like to, in 2021, have the assurance you're walking in God's favor? What a wonderful feeling that would be, where you would know with a certainty that you have the favor of God on your life. It's one of the few times we get to test him, and, and we get to test him with our tithes and author, offerings. And he says, prove me, uh, prove me now in this, if I will not open for you uh, the windows of heaven. Here's another verse for you to consider, particularly in these days of trouble. And when you have the favor of God, you can pray this over yourself. It's from Psalm 50. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. For that wonderful family, they saw the glory of the Lord dawn on their life. When you start talking about $250,000 in debt being wiped out in the time period that they experienced, that's the glory. That's the favor. You can have that in your life if you just follow the same principle. Uh, when you go through life confident that God is with you, he's going to be with you in the day of trouble. He will deliver you from everything that's going wrong. He will do these things for you all because you obey the voice of the Lord. When you live this way, wonderful things can happen. Now, if you want to start a lifetime of giving, this isn't an on again, off again thing. It's a commitment. I'm putting God first. I want to tithe. I want to have tithes and offerings. If you'd like to do that, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month. That's 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at 700 Club Gold. That's $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level God is putting on your heart, do it now. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. When you call and join the 700 Club, I want you to have this. It's my father's latest book. It's called, I Have Walked with a Living God. It's his testimony of his walk with God since the founding of CBN. 60 plus years of walking with God, obeying the voice of the Lord. And because of his obedience, everything you're seeing, God has increased. It, God has blessed. God has given favor. And my father gives you the stories of what happened and what he was praying and how God was answering. It's yours when you join. 1-800-700-7000. Well, whenever there was an emergency, Robert and Edie were among the first ones on the scene as EMTs. Their mission was to save lives. Years later, they both lost their jobs. Their power was about to be cut off, 
and they needed someone to save them. Saving lives is the biggest reward for first responders as they put others before themselves. If it's a burning house, you run in. That's just what you do. If it's a car upside down in a ditch, you go inside that car and you get that person out. You think about the consequences afterwards. It felt good to be able to give back and help someone out. Robert and Edie Rowland were both EMTs for more than 15 years in North Carolina. They actually met on the job and later married. Over the years, lifting people and heavy objects took a serious toll on their necks and backs. I've had two vertebrae in my neck replaced. I got cadaver's disc, a titanium steel plate, and screws. It's been really hard, really hard, not being able to move certain days, not being able to walk. Unable to keep working as EMTs, they did their best to find different jobs to support their family. But eventually, Robert couldn't work anymore. Then Edie lost her job in retail. We had lights that were getting ready to be cut off, and they couldn't for a few months because of the, the COVID rule. But then, if you can't have a job, you can't catch up. Their church and others pitched in to help, but buying food for themselves and their son was still a struggle until Edie met a woman from a church down her block. She told me that they do give away food once in a while. I said, well, here's my number, give me a call. And she did. Operation Blessing provides food to Eastern Star Church, which has multiple monthly distributions. It's something different every time you go. One time we got chicken, one time we got bacon, one time we got ham. It's always something good. It's a chance to help a hurting community and a family that sacrificed so much for it. I'm not used to having people do for me like that. Just really appreciate it. It means a lot. Operation Blessing has been the best thing for us. I mean, there's no words to really say how it feels to not have anything. And then you go down there and they load you up. All in all, it's been a blessing every way around. And that blessing came from you. If you're a member of the 700 Club, a portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the wonderful work of Operation Blessing, where you're feeding people across America. During this pandemic, millions, tens of millions, have lost their jobs, had more month and money, and you came through for them to provide them the food that they needed. When disasters strike, we want to strike back. We want to have relief. Uh, disaster relief teams on the ground providing much needed food and water in the initial hours, but then helping people rebuild their lives, rebuild their homes, and then internationally the wonderful work that's being done, all in your name if you're a member of the 700 Club. If that's you, join with us. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, yes, I want to be a member. Now, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. The bank is doing all the work, and we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you like those, uh, ask for Pledge Express when you call, or you can go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We also have something new where you can text to give. Text the letters CBN to 71. 777, and it will come up with a monthly giving page, uh, and you can join Pledge Express that way. Either way, do it now. 1 800 700 7000. Well, when her husband deployed, Megan was left to man the home front by herself. With three children at home, she was forced to quit her job. Megan worried about the added financial stress until CBN gave her entire family a major hand up. Air Force Tech Sergeant Ian has deployed for six months multiple times. It's never easy on his family, but now he deploys for a year. Megan must shoulder the responsibilities of both mom and dad while he's gone. I know that she can do it. She actually is the perfect military <laughs> spouse. I have no doubt if there's an issue, and we have a good network of friends, family, she can call, and uh, she's taking care of. I know that that lifts the burden off of him, to be able to leave knowing that uh, I have it taken care of. To prepare for this year's separation, they decided Megan should leave her part-time job at a grocery store to be at home full-time with the boys. The $5,000 cut to their budget will be missed, but necessary. If somebody got sick or the school closed down or we had to go remote, um, I would have to call in and say I couldn't be there. So I was hanging on to something 
that was going to end up being I was going to have to quit anyways. At the halfway point, Ian is allowed three weeks of leave. However, the family is responsible for the cost of the flight home. If it puts it in a financial bind, it, we won't put ourselves in that situation. Despite the financial and emotional challenges this year may bring, they know God will see them through. My faith and my prayers will absolutely play a role in, a huge role in getting through. Near Ian's duty station at Seymour Johnson Joint Military Base, North Carolina, is their church home, The Lord's Table. The church asked helping the home front to get involved. Pastor Ken Jefferson told the couple CBN was offsetting their loss of income that Megan brought in from her part-time job. No way. Serious? <laughs> Might do it. I ain't crying. No way. Oh, no. So that's just the beginning. Helping the home front and their partners want to make sure that it isn't money that keeps you apart for a year. And so they're going to cover your ticket home at your midway point. Make sure that you're able to come home, spend some time with your family. It really is amazing because we really would not have had him come home if we couldn't do it. So that, that's amazing because that's the best gift that we could have. The first week of January 2021, Ian shipped out. This family is now looking forward to his visit home this summer. Thank you to the CVM Partners for this incredible blessing. I don't think a thank you is, is even enough. It's great. It's awesome. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Thank you, everyone, everyone on the team. And that thank you goes to you because you're on the team. You're part of the 700 Club. You're part of helping military families. We call it helping the home front. And we want to let military families know that we recognize their service. Uh, it's a great sacrifice to have a parent, to have a spouse, in the military, you spend extended times apart, uh, and then there's usually a whole lot more month than money, and we want to help them. We want to be there in their time of need, and we're there in your name when you're a member of the 700 Club. So be a part of it. Be a part of everything we're doing. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. We've got a lot of different club levels for you. We have 700 Club Gold at $40 a month, 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, $84 a month, 2,500 Club is 2,500 a year, and then Founder, $5,000 or more a year. At whatever level God is telling you to join, do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Well, when you join the 700 Club, we have a gift for you. It's my father's latest book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Here's a sample of what's inside. Hi, this is Pat Robertson with an excerpt from my new book, I Have Walked with the Living God, read by actor Kevin Sorbo. I hope it will be a blessing to you as you walk with God. If you can take one thing away from this book, it is this. Get rid of the clutter in your life. Stop doing non-essential things and stop thinking you are accomplishing something just because you are engaged in a whirl of activities. Instead, spend your time in the presence of the Lord. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Get your copy today when you become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. I've written a book called I Have Walked with the Living God. In its pages, I've shared many of the things God has spoken to me. At one time, the Lord told me, and I quote, do not fear the future. For I am the future. I can tell you that when you step out into the future, you step out into the hands of a loving God whom you can trust not only for tomorrow, but forever. In Pat's dynamic latest book, you'll learn how to receive favor, wisdom, and discernment, how to overcome obstacles and live a life that is exhilarating and full of promise. I think this book can help you live that kind of a life. 
Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your copy today. Do you want to know more about having a relationship with God? Call us at 1-800-700-7000. And welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. A new state flag is making its debut at the Mississippi Capitol building. It replaces the old state banner, which included Confederate imagery. The newly redesigned flag features a magnolia, Mississippi's state flower, along with the words, In God We Trust. Mississippi voters got to weigh in at the ballot box and pick the redesigned look for the new flag. Well, the number one Apple podcast right now is not a news show or even a murder mystery. Instead, it's a Bible study podcast from the Catholic group Ascension Presents. It's called The Bible in a Year, hosted by Father Mike Schmitz. There are not only a bunch of powerful stories in the Bible, but there's also the, the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I think that is probably what people are realizing they need maybe more than they have in the past. The 25-minute podcast includes a scripture reading followed by historical context and theological reflection. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. Gordon and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Hi, folks. This is Pat Robertson, and I want to thank you for watching the 700 Club. Now make sure to click the subscribe button below so you'll never miss an episode. The team at CBN always reads in response to your comments and prayer requests, so keep them coming. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, does the God who created the vast universe care about your small problems? Janice Jordan didn't think so at first. So what changed her mind? She'll tell you herself. Just watch. I was a library director for over 15 years. And of course, wearing the heels and, you know, this is the suit and jacket days. Show up to work looking A plus. You had to wear your shoes and look great. <laughs> Janice Jordan would spend hours on her feet in the library. Then she left the library to pursue a career teaching special needs students, and that put her on her feet even more. I have a group of students I take that are supervised, basically little interns at the hospital, the autistic students, and so get them ready. I'm going, I have to walk three miles in the hospital. Working on her feet for years took its toll, as Janice developed a painful affliction known as hammer toes. Hammer toes are a turning under of the four toes. The condition was probably onset by wearing the high, high heels. There was pain that deep associated with it. After dealing with the pain several years, Janice finally consulted her doctor. What can I do to get healed or cured from these? And he talked about surgery and where they break the bones and reset. And that was not in my lane. So I said, thank you. I never followed up on that at all. So she did her best to push through the pain for another 10 years. I'm a person who keeps on moving. And I just accommodated this. And the pain, I just didn't really focus on it or really pay attention to it. What she didn't do in all that time is pray. Because to Janice, her problem wasn't big enough to pray about. But as a regular viewer of the 700 Club, she's always loved praying for others, especially when the hosts pray for the audience. Prayer is very important. You can't accomplish anything without prayer. Then on July 4th, 2019, after doing some yard work, Janice hurried inside to catch the Word of Knowledge prayer segment on the 700 Club. This time, it was Janice's turn to receive a word. The very first words out of his mouth struck me. There's someone you, you've got hammer toe and you have some other issues that are age related. You're not even praying, but God is saying, I can even restore, I can renew your youth. I'm in really awe because this is me. <laughs> He's talking about me. <laughs> that toe be restored now in Jesus' name and let that be a sign to you that he has plans, he has purpose for your life. And there 
I felt, and I looked at my toes, they were going flat, and the pain was just flowing from them. This was my set time, and just totally unexpected. I was also very surprised. So God does, God has the most wonderful surprises for you. <laughs> Janice has been pain-free ever since, and her hammer toes have not returned. Now a part of an intercessory prayer group, she encourages everyone to reach out in prayer, no matter how big or how small their needs might be. And he is the great physician. He takes all kinds of cases, my little tiny one to the big ones, such as the cancers and so on. The Lord is looking. He is looking to move on our behalf. I love that. He takes all kinds of cases, little ones like something wrong with your feet or big ones like cancer. God is the God of miracles. He does it all. He's no respecter of persons. And what he did for Janice, he wants to do with you. And I love she wasn't even praying. And yeah. God healed her. Yeah. Well, the centurion servant, he wasn't praying. Uh, it was the centurion. The centurion servant didn't even know the prayer was happening. And he got healed. Mm. You can get healed by a living God. Jesus announced that it's his very first sermon. Uh, it, you find it in the Gospel of Mark in the first chapter. You don't have to read far. Uh, the, the kingdom of God is at hand. Then there's this wonderful Greek word, metanous, change your thinking and believe the good news. Now, some English translations call it, say, repent and believe the good news. Just change your thinking. Think about this. If the kingdom of God is at hand, that means you can reach up and grab it. And in heaven, is there anybody sick? No. So that's God's will. We know that. Jesus told us to pray that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if it's God's will that nobody be sick, that's his will in heaven, well, then it's his will for your body. And all you have to do is reach up and grab it. Change your thinking. Believe the good news. God cares about you. He loves you. He numbers every hair on your head. He wants to provide your every need. He provides for the sparrows, and he provides for you. And you are his child. He breathed you into existence. He loves you infinitely. He wants to be your all in all. He wants to be your God today. Now, we're going to pray. Before we pray, here's some other miracles. Here's Rita from Riverview, Florida. She hurt her finger, was in pain for months. She couldn't straighten it. One day, she was watching the 700 Club, and Wendy, the anointed one, said, <laughs> someone's right index finger is hurting, it's crippled and bent. God is straightening, straightening, it, straightening it out. Hmm. After the show, Rita noticed her finger was healed. <laughs> she can bend it and straighten it without pain. God works miracles. Praise the Lord. Love uh, that. Okay, here's one. For years, Donna of Powell, Wyoming, suffered with terrible neck and back pain. The pain limited her mobility and her daily activities. Then one day, while she was watching the club, she heard you give a word of knowledge, Gordon. Uh, Donna claimed that word. And when she turned her head, she felt the muscles release. She called the prayer center right away and said, I haven't been able to move my neck in years, but she was healed. All right, place your hand on that area of the body that needs healing and let's pray. Lord, we lift everyone in the audience to you right now. For those who are laying hands, for those who are believing in your kingdom, for those that are reaching up to get what you have so generously provided, we come into agreement with them. We say, be healed and be set free. There's someone you're laying your left hand on the back of your neck. Your entire spine just got healed. God is releasing you from all that pain, all that injury in the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do before and realize how great his power is towards you. You're healed, set free. Wendy? Somebody with severe bronchitis, God's touching you right now. And someone with locked jaw brought on by severe stress, God is touching you. And your jaw is, you're being, the muscles are being released now in Jesus' name. Someone else name. with double pneumonia, you're being healed now. 
In Jesus' name. We're out of time, but here's a word from Psalms 138. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand. Your right hand will save me. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. As I look back over my 90 years, I see a life of ongoing excitement filled with loving God and seeing His power at work. I've written a book called, I Have Walked with the Living God, telling about the wonderful things that have happened to me. It's my hope that it will lead you to a deeper understanding of God and inspire you to set a course to serve Him. In Pat's dynamic latest book, you'll learn how to receive favor, wisdom, and discernment, how to overcome obstacles and live a life that is exhilarating and full of promise. I believe this book will help you step into your future, ready to trust God and receive His blessings in your life. Nothing can compare to a life lived for God's glory and purpose. Call now or go to CBN.com to receive your copy today.